Friends, praise the Lord um, for this time. Thanks be to God for the life that he gives us. Life that he gives us as his children to continue loving and serving him. We were created to worship God and I have never forgotten the Latin word for who I am, Imago Dei, God is image in me. And so um, this day we come with a personality, the Bible, that we think about, we learn about, and so that in their footsteps we put ours for the good that they did. And because they did good, because they exhibited faith, God accepted them even when they have frailties, even when they had weaknesses. And in this program, Finding God, you see, these men and women found God and God used them for what he did. And so that we pick lessons like we have always shared, that we learn from them the hope that they had, the faith that they had, the patience that they exercised, and the doings that they did. And so that we learn something, you and I, during our times, during our generation, and that God will be pleased with us, with you and me. And so the person that I want to talk about very, very briefly is the man called Abraham. Abraham, who formerly was Abram, the man called by God. Yes, we read it in Genesis chapter 12. And an only person from a polygamous family, a man rich, yes, wherever he was, but did not know God. And the family was polytheistic. So history tells us that they did not know God, but they had many gods. And they knew nothing about the God of heaven, but they lived their life in their, in their territory. And they knew what they what to do. They were farmers, of course, actually rearing many, many cattle, sheep, and things like that. They were cattle keepers and things like that. And Abraham was a rich man. And we are introduced to him in Genesis chapter 12 when God appears and calls him from, to, I mean, from his family, that he leave your family, leave your kindred, and go to the land that I will show you. Go to the country that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. So God promises him a great nation and you will be a blessing and I will make you your name great so that you'll be a blessing to other people. Now this man Abraham begins his journey this way. God, when God decides to pick someone, he will pick him or her and he will use that person despite the weaknesses, despite the frailties that the person could be having, but God picks someone. And so it is his own will. And like here he picks Abraham and Abraham becomes one of our spiritual giants in the Bible. And he becomes the father of the faithful, as we read about him in Romans chapter 4, verse 11. And Abraham, this man, because he responded the way he did, he became the friend of God. As we read in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, and James chapter 2, verse 23. Now, he impacted a lot. Judaism was one of the religions that Abraham impacted. And he's mentioned also among the Muslims as one of the great people, one of the great, great pillars in their religion. And another faith that actually impacted is the Christianity, you and I. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and therefore we're Christians. But our ancestor of the faith, the Bible talks about Abraham. He was our beginning of the faith. And God, after creating the world and very many things had happened from Genesis chapter 1 up to 10. Now God decides to choose another line. And this line was through Abraham so that he would bring a people special to him. And he says to Abraham directly, through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And so uh, the vital lessons that we pick from this man, Abraham, and of course, okay, because of the time, we cannot go through everything that is, but at least I've mentioned the name Abraham, first of all, that he was called by then. And then when God changed him, he gave him a new name. A new name was Abraham, from Abraham to Abraham. And his wife was called Sarai, and he made her Sarah. And of course, actually, this was, these were the transformations that led him to be a friend of God, to be a man of faith. And a friend of God, a man of faith, he made him a father of nations, Abraham, father of nations, father of many. And Sarah, 
the mother of many. And you know, their, their life was, you know, a life of, you know, of barrenness. Although they were rich, they had everything. But God tells him, leave your family and your kindred and go to the land that I will show you. So there are lessons that we pick from here. Number one that we learn from Abraham is the willingness and ability to give up everything for God and for God's sake. Now this man was called to leave his homeland and he, was, he, he departed and he went. He immediately went out and left. And it was because of this, when we read about him in Hebrews chapter 11, he was one of the giants that the Bible talks about here. And because he believed what God was telling him, he left and went and followed what God's instructions were telling him to go, not knowing where he was going. What a faith, what a faith, not knowing where he was going. And Abraham is a friend of God. Abraham is a man of faith, not knowing where he went, where he was going, but in Genesis chapter 11, the Bible talks about him as he left and went. Because God had promised, and he had not seen a God, our God is an invisible God, not with physical eyes, but he saw him at heart. And so, Abraham the man, we read about him, he was great. And he, remember how he was tested to sacrifice his son. He willfully did it. What a faith. Now, willingness and ability to give up everything, including his son. That's point number one. And Abraham was a human being, but his faith was bigger than his doubts. Of course, actually, many times he would doubt. You and I doubt a lot. Yes, we do. Because of human nature, Abraham did. Even when God had promised him a son, because of the doubts, there were so many wrong things, and like mistakes that he did. This is when he brings in the two pictures, the woman called Hagar. It was doubt, because he had already promised him. But then because of the impatience, that was humanly speaking, he had no son, and therefore Hagar comes into picture, and there was trouble there. Now, Abraham, the man, was the man of faith, and the faith that makes life unstoppable. And Abraham became unstoppable there. And the faith for us as Christians, we believe in Christ, in Jesus Christ, and our faith is the faith that makes Christianity unstoppable. Nobody can stop us. And Christianity has existed for, you know, thousands of years. Yes, it has been on, and it still goes, it's still going on. It never stops. It's unstoppable. People are still getting saved. People are still professing Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, I am one of those, the recent people. I'm not very old. You are not very old, maybe, or you are very old, but you know Christianity has been here longer. It's unstoppable. And so the lesson that we pick from this man, Abraham, is actually his willingness and ability to give up everything for God's sake. And now we're also called upon to do the same. He gave everything. And so may God help us, my brother and my sister, to devote our life and being to God. God never leaves us empty. He never left Abraham empty. Now put down everything and, you know, he will do something better for you. And I have always believed that God will do something better for me and he will do something better for you, you know, as opposed to what you may be having, as opposed to what, as opposed to what you may be possessing, but God always does better. Now may God do better for you because Abraham believed and something good came his way. Point number two is that even our spiritual giants, these men and women that we're talking about, Abraham in the picture here, are still humans. Even when they became friends of God, they were giants of the faith, they had frailties, like I've already mentioned, they had weaknesses. Abraham and Sarah had you no know, child. That was actually human in a weakness, yes. But despite the frailties, despite the weaknesses, you know, God still loved them. God was able still to perform something in their house, in their life. Now, there are times when hopes fed. Now, Abraham and Sarah, their hopes had faded. You know, very old age, and they were, you know. The life was, they knew that they would not get a child, but God, that God had promised. But Abraham, remember, he believed in God. It took time, yes. The reason I have, I've mentioned about Hagar coming to picture, Abraham also taking many other concubines, as we read in Genesis chapter 25, yes. Those were the frailties. And though that this man was not perfect, he was a friend of God. And now this is a huge lesson for us. That actually, despite our, you know, our frailties, 
I've always said that actually, I've always believed that God does not have a dustbin for, for sinners. He keeps cleansing, he keeps renewing. As long as you are able and willing to come to him. You know, he just invites us, come to me. You all you who are tired and heavy laden, I will give you rest. And he cleanses us. He, that's the reason why he, Jesus gives us the story of the prodigal son in, in, in Luke chapter 15. He got and lost, willingly went away. But when he came back, his father received him. And so God gives us another chance. That despite the, these frailties, despite these weaknesses, Abraham was a friend of God. And that you, despite the weaknesses that you could be having, keep hope high because Abraham was a human being like anyone of us, but he was a friend of God. Now, I just want to be a friend of God, and I pray that you become the friend of God. Remain faithful. Ours is repentance and turning back to God. And point number three, Abraham gave tithe. Tithe leads to physical or real blessings. You know, there's a story that's talked about him in Genesis. Uh, you know, he goes, fights, he wins the war against the four kings, comes back, and meets this man called Merak Zedek. Merak Zedek, in Hebrew, actually it means the king of righteousness. Merak is king. Zedek is righteousness. So he was a king. And Abraham came and, you know, he gave tithe to God and the man became so mighty, a prince on earth. As we read in Genesis chapter 23, verse 6. And, you know, he became very rich. Genesis chapter 13, you see him actually rich. And so it is a lesson to us actually that actually those who give tithe keep giving. Because it is, you know, the book of Malachi talks about it. Later, later, later times in the Malachi chapter, uh, chapter 3. But Abraham was actually the first person here mentioned that he gave tithes to the king called Melchizedek. Melchizedek, uh, the king of righteousness. And God blessed Abraham anyway. So we learn from this man Abraham that actually the, the some practices that we do. And through them, God blesses us. And how I pray that actually there are certain things that you need to do that God, God blesses you. That there are certain things that I need to do that God blesses me. And how I pray that actually continues blessing me and continues blessing you. Now, try your best. And number four is that faith is both believing and doing. And Abraham gives us an example here. When God told him to leave, he left. When God asked him to sacrifice his son, he did. And God saved it. God provided a way. When God did what? Abraham was a man of faith, a man of faith and a man of doing. He kept doing and already Genesis, I mean Romans chapter 4 and then James chapter 2 verse 23. Now faith is demonstrated to action and the book, the letter of James is the one that keeps, that faith or that action is dead. And this generation is full of action. I mean it's full of word. This generation is full of talking. This generation is full of, you know, word, 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 shout, shout, shout. But action, doing the right thing before God is the problem. And so we are encouraged to do something good. We are encouraged to do something good. Don't be like the man who we read about in the Bible, in, in Luke, the rich man and the Lazarus. You know, when he was still on earth, he did many, many wrong things. Selfishness and mistreatment and things like that. But time comes and the man he dies. And the Bible says he goes to hell. And there, 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 there is suffering. So while we are here on earth, do good. You know, let faith be move, I mean, move along with actions. And so that you'll be counted good here and you'll be counted good in heaven. And may God see what we say and do and reward us. May he reward you and things like that. And so faith is demonstrated through action. Abraham demonstrated this to us. And may we follow footsteps of this old man, of this man, whoever he was. We never saw him, but actually he is our father in the faith. He is a friend of God. And finally, when there is a decision that you take, that you want to make, listen to me. Think and do it generationally. Generations to come. Now, this man Abraham did everything. That's actually my final point that I'm making here as I wind up. That Abraham proves that he is a man of decision, yes, and also be a man of decision. Decide something at least. Do something, make a decision. But also make decisions. We make choices, but as you make them, look up. Abraham, many times he could look up to know that he had a that he would have descendants, he would have people who would come after him. Now take care, your actions, your decisions that you make can make some other people blessed, can make the, some other people suffer. Parents, as a parent, you can make a decision. You do decision not to take your children to school. Yes, you have, you have decided, yes, maybe something happened, but the future will suffer because of the ignorance. 
The fear will suffer because of if you don't discipline your child when he's still young, you are relegating your responsibility. But do everything that is going to take generationally. If you are planning to build a house, build it. If you are planning a business, do it. If you are planning something, do it for your children, for your future, you know, for your descendants to enjoy, to look back and say, yes, our grandfather worked. I've seen people that have prouded themselves because their father has bought a lot of land and they're also expanding on the same. Leave alone the, the chaotic ones who after inheriting, they sell and, des and destroy the property. But those that are industrious will build on. And like I've seen, and if you are one of them, if you have one piece of land and you have multiplied, you have added, you have added, you have built a house, you have, you know, you have, you have educated your children or you are educating them or you're a younger person, think about the generation that will come after you. So as you spend your life now, and I spend my life now, I need to think generationally. So be before making a decision, think about how it can affect not just you, but others who are coming after you. Think about the future. So my brothers and sisters, Abraham is the man that we're talking about here. And I want to thank God that actually I've had this opportunity that Abraham was willing, had a willingness and ability to give up everything. And because of that, he became the friend of God. And God invites us to leave certain things, that bad habits, things that actually we do that are not good. And we become friends of God and men of faith and women of faith. And also even spiritual giants are still human beings. We see their weaknesses. We see their frailties. But they became, they, were, they still, still look up and look back up to God and God would forgive them. And the tithing is, the, is, is something that leads to blessings. And Abraham did to merek the deck. And, you know, he was enormous, he was a giant, he was a mighty man, he was a mighty prince. And may you become a prince, may, you, may I become a prince. And I continue tithing my time, my money, my everything, my energies. Because that's what God desires. And faith is both believing and doing. May we go, keep doing good. And actually, finally, that actually whatever we do, may we do it generationally. That we know that actually after us, there are people that are coming. You know, if there's something that you're doing, do it for the generations. If you're building a road then not actually that it has to be generational. Even if you're not using it for longer here, you know that there are people who are coming up after you. If you're building a house, if you're doing what, if you're, you contract, you, you carpenters, you what, name it. May God, who is our father, keep us safe and give us lessons so that we can shall keep learning from these men and women of the faith. And so something good will be coming out of our actions. And may God bless you. As you think about the life of Abraham, there's much more that you need to learn about Abraham and live as a man of faith and plan and stay well, knowing that there are some other people who will come after you. May we may find the good, do good, be good, and God will bless you and will watch over you. Like watch number after Abraham and his wife. May he watch over us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>